the actions that you're looking for for joint support are really actions that will clear the joint space and clear the blood. So you want a lot of alterative clearing and toning actions. A lot of effect for, again, for leaky gut. Because if you are thinking like a herbalist, you're thinking that there's a potential space in the joint as well as a potential space in the skin. And an irritation within this space is going to irritate the joints and eventually cause damage to the joints. So the actions that you're looking for are in part anti-inflammatory, and that seems almost obvious. And you're thinking, well, if you have an anti-inflammatory effect, that's all you need. But that's not the case because that calms down the symptoms, which is very nice, but it's also very temporary. Behind the anti-inflammatory effect, you want an alterative blood cleansing effect. You want the actions of the bitters, again, as we've described previously. You want to calm down the nervous system, partly because anything that causes pain will cause irritation to the nervous system and make people cranky. And that's in common with all pain, no matter where it comes from. Nutrition is important in order for the anti-inflammatory effect to be replaced by a healthy reaction. You need all of the building blocks and possibly some supplement level building blocks as part of the nutrition profile. Digestive function, particularly astringents, again, it's that toning and sealing of the gastric tract, avoiding leaky gut, and also the same for the space within the joint. You want that to have an effective barrier so that the things that should be kept out of the joint space are kept out of the joint space, but the things that need to be excreted from within the joint are also facilitated. You want a circulatory reaction so that all of the nutrition can get to the joint and all of the irritants can be taken away from the joint. And the circulatory herbs help other herbs to get into the joint space. An astringent action again ties in with the digestive function and also astringency in toning up the structures and tissues within the joint. So a wide range of action and you're not just looking to suppress the symptoms and this can take time. The treatment time for joint support using the tea or the tincture is really a minimum of six weeks, more likely to be 12 weeks, initially combining the tea and the tincture for mild to moderate or moderate to severe and then as the symptoms resolve you can go to a background treatment with the tea on a long-term basis stopping for three weeks every three months reintroducing the tea and using the joint support tincture for flare-ups and as additional anti-inflammatory and beneficial effects for flare-ups and severe problems. For the joint cleansing tea, we have silver birch, which is astringent, bitter, anti-inflammatory and diuretic. This is a herb in traditional use. Very little research into its effect, but traditionally used for joint pains. Yarrow, we've discussed before, The meadowsweet you're familiar with, the dandelion root and the peppermint you're looking for, the bile support and antispasmodic, particularly for the digestive tract and also cooling. Peppermint is a nice cooling plant. Then red clover is important for the lymphatic effect and it has hormone balancing plant of estrogen, which can be particularly important for postmenopausal women. Women around and after the menopause tend to develop joint problems. So this is a nice balancing effect for hormone balance. Joint cleansing tea is a very pleasant tasting tea and it is suitable for using for three months and then taking a three-week break and repeating the three-month cycle of using the tea to redress long-term joint problems and also acting in a preventive role. So it tastes very pleasant and is easy to use. The joint relief blend of tincture contains cramp bark, devil's claw, prickly ash and silver birch and white willow. Within these, the actions of the different herbs include for the cramp bark an antispasmodic nerve and muscle relaxant effect, an astringent effect and a mild sedative effect. These are very important actions for relaxing and relieving the cramp and spasm which surrounds a painful joint in the muscles. And the muscles cramp up and become irritated in order to immobilize the joint so that it can heal. But you want a nice balanced effect of being able to maintain the protective effect 
of muscle spasm, but also allow the joint to move within a range of mobility so the joint can maintain its flexibility. The cramp bark also has a helpful effect as a sedative because with painful joints, people often have difficulty sleeping and they often get miserable and tense. The sleeping difficulties include micro-wakenings where they have no consciousness of waking during the night, but every time they roll over, it disturbs their sleep, but not to a conscious extent. So the cramp bark has a very helpful adjunctive effect in relieving muscle spasm, which allows the joint to heal better while maintaining mobility. Devil's Claw is probably the most well-known and definitely the best researched anti-inflammatory herb. It has an anti-inflammatory effect which is well documented on the enzymes of the inflammatory pathways. It has a marked analgesic effect which can be shown in some studies to be as effective as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories but without the problems associated with digestive upset. So devil's claw in a high enough dose can be as effective as non steroidal anti-inflammatories. The dose in the joint relief blend is at the lower end of the therapeutic margins. If there is moderate to severe pain, additional oral capsules of devil's claw can be taken in addition to the joint relief blend. And it can be combined with turmeric and bromelain and various other anti-inflammatories. The Devil's Claw is a useful background dose in a blend of herbs that has quite a number of other additional actions. Prickly Ash is an analgesic, an alterative, a bitter, a carminative effect on the digestive system, um, which is a nice soothing effect. It is a circulatory stimulant to small vessels, which is particularly useful for the small vessels in the joints and in the joint capsule. And it also has a diaphoretic effect. So a wide range of effects even within one herb of this multi-action, multi-constituent, multi-target general effect of a herb, all of which add up to overall very beneficial actions. Silver birch is a traditionally used herb. There's very little research available for it, but has traditionally been used for joint problems as an astringent a bitter and an anti-inflammatory effect with a mild diuretic action. This is a very nice, again, a nice rounded action from one single herb used in combination with other herbs. White willow, all of the willow species or salix species, S-A-L-I-X, have salicylic acid. The first commercial extractions of salicylic acid were derived from the white willow. It is an anti-rheumatic effect and it reduces fever. It has been demonstrated that the anti-inflammatory effect is derived not only from the salicylic acid in willow, but also from other constituents which have an additive effect or a synergistic effect or combined effect. Synergy is S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y and it refers to herbal actions that not only are additive when you add the effects together but also help each other more than just adding the two effects together. It really is a question of more effect by combining constituents and by combining herbs. Again this is a background amount of white willow and additional doses can be provided orally. This would be in the lower range of therapeutic dosage combined within the joint relief blend. Overall, the joint relief blend is suitable for people who want to use herbs but don't want to go to the trouble of taking the tea. Again, you can use it for three months with three weeks off. You can use this blend initially in combination with the tea to get an additional therapeutic effect in order to bring joint problems under control and then people can manage their long-term rehabilitation of the joint using the tea. And people can use the tea as a background effect and just use the joint relief blend to address a flare-up, for example, of osteoarthritis.
There's a great role to be played using topical um, support and pain relief for the smaller joints in the body. So these are very good for the fingers, particularly the base of the thumb, which is a common site for arthritis, the wrists, the knees, the feet and the ankles. Not so good for hip pain and not so good for low back pain, especially if people are overweight because it's much harder to penetrate into the tissues. These are used as a dry friction. So you put a little bit, a teaspoon of the blend in the palm of one hand and rub it on the opposite side of the body. I'm doing this as we speak and it's a dry tincture alcohol rub. And the friction is very important because even if you didn't use a rub, if you were to do a dry friction rub over the area of arthritic pain, you would get some relief because it would heat the joint and open up the blood vessels. So you would have a joint clearing effect and a joint nutrition effect. The role of the joint support rub is to maintain that heat for longer. So people will get a red flare So long as it's not extreme, that's fine. If it's extreme or there's any blistering, that indicates that they are sensitive or allergic to one of the constituents and it shouldn't be used by that person. As with every topical agent, use on an unaffected small area of the body. For instance, the inner side of the forearm would be a good place to try to make sure that somebody isn't allergic to a topical agent very important always wash the hands after use because obviously if you have something that contains KN pepper you don't want to forget 10 minutes later and rub your eye and find that you've irritated your eye if that happens as with any other noxious problem with the eye just rinse it out under room temperature water just pour a jug of water over the sink into the eye to flush out any of the agents in the blend and that usually resolves the problem fairly quickly the herbs that are in the topical joint support rub are kn which is a rubefacient rube is the latin i think if not the greek for redness so it promotes redness of the area by opening the circulation and it's counter irritant. And what that means is it provides a stimulation which competes then with the stimulation to pain receptors. It's like they both go to leave the field through a small gate and only one can fit in at a time. If you use one of these counter irritants, you're blocking the pathway to pain in a competitive manner with the inflammatory agents. Horse chestnut reduces swelling to the area Myrrh is anti-inflammatory and toning, and the prickly ash, as we said before, is pain-relieving and has various other effects. This is the toothache tree. How often can you use the joint support rub? Really, every one to three hours as often as you need. Depending on where the joint is, it can be hard for people to get at it during the day. So use it a lot if there's a lot of pain, and then go back to rubbing it on twice a day or three times a day if you can at lunchtime. A very important use of herbs because it applies directly, it opens up the circulation, it helps the herbs that you take orally, and it relieves discomfort and maintains mobility. And all of these are incredibly valuable things to support.